Good day. Welcome to this presentation of employee onboarding. What we're going to do is go through a employee onboarding scenario, starting off using the K2 immersion experience. We we're going to start off some onboarding, uh, onboarding, and we're going to show you just how a process can run from end to end, involving multiple different people, parallel processes, as well as exposing the uh, K2 environment inside of other technologies as well, including SharePoint. So to begin with, what we're going to do is go and find an employee onboarding application, and we're going to kick this off by onboarding somebody that I've already got loaded in the system. What you're having a look at here is a KD smart form. Uh, on the smart form, uh, we've got different views on it. So we've got employee details view, a view to do with their role, and various other views that are sitting on different tabs so that we can fill in this employee onboarding form. In light of time, I'm going to go and load up a saved draft. So I've got a draft here of uh, Hamilton Hume. I'm going to load up, as you can see it's loaded up his details. Now this gives me the ability to go and obviously start capturing his details and then go and continually save this as a draft and maybe submit it in a couple of days once I've got all the different information. In this particular case I've got almost everything that I need for this uh, particular employee. Um, I can go into different sections, for example over here where it says departments. If I go and say that they're in the IT department, we can see that drop down list changing. If I go and put them into sales, you can see again sales uh, roles uh, appearing over there. So just a little example of uh, a cascading drop down where this form is actually pulling through um, my manager and uh, the department head out of Active Directory. It's pulling through departments and uh, role information out of a backend uh, SQL database and using a little bit of cascading drop downs taking place inside there. What we can do here as well is go and specify what sort of access requirements they might have. So again, just demonstrating you know, some check boxes and, and additional views where we can start to add additional items into the list. Uh, we can go to the equipment and facilities. And on this particular form, we're demonstrating a little bit of how we can you know, make things disabled uh, if we are going to use existing uh, IT hardware or you know, we enable and disabling these different sections based upon the information that uh, that you're busy uh, filling in on the screen. Uh, quite a nice use of this is if I need to order new IT hardware. Opening that, you can see it's opening up a whole section below. This little purchase order section opens up, and then for th with inside here, I can go and choose items out of a catalog, and decide how many items that I need to perhaps order for this new employee. So let's get them a, a printer and a new laptop. So the benefit here is that you know we're adding multiple items to an employee onboarding form, but what we could also happen is a purchase order process could be kicked off in parallel, and thereby when the employee starts, all of his onboarding is done, but as well as his uh, IT requisitions taking place as well, and then his shiny new laptops waiting for the, for him from day one uh, to begin work with. So there's no lost revenue in somebody sitting around uh, waiting for uh, you know bit, bits and bobs to sort of uh, start arriving before they can get on with their job. Anyway, so we filled in this form, we've completed all the, the requirements, and what we can simply do now is go and submit that off. So that gives us a little bit of feedback that we've started an onboarding process. It takes us back to our little immersion environment where I can now drill down to the bottom there and I can see employee onboarding for Hamilton has now started. And if I drill into the K2 view flow, we're going to get a representation of the workflow that's running behind the scenes there. So what's happening in this particular process is it has started off, it's gone and it's done some system uh, inter interactions, so created AD accounts and emails and various different things. Uh, in my particular example, I'm using AD, they could be using Azure AD, uh, could even be going and provisioning things inside of a SQL database. What actually happens in the, uh, behind the scenes there is it's, uh, it creates an Active Directory profile for that person, but it also updates uh, the leave uh, travel management systems as well so that they've got the right uh, um, amount of leave uh, allocated to them as well. While we've been waiting, we can see that uh, the facilities have completed you know, making the badge for them and so has security completed their work. So this process is spawned out into a parallel process whereby those different individuals or those different departments can get on with doing their work without waiting for the others. So it's not like a piece of paper that's being passed from one person to the next, it's been split off. Some of these have actually kicked off sub-processes, so for example the security, if I drill down into that particular one, what we can see is that's actually a sub-process. So this security process could be something that started on its own independently, but it's also a process that employee onboarding kicks off automatically as well. So it's a reusable workflow process. 
So going back, what we have now is the human resources team needing to do some work and IT needing to do some authorizations. Now IT could be rejecting and uh, approving and rejecting as many times as needed to get that IT uh, requirements uh, ironed out correctly while human resources gets on with their work. So there's no delaying. Uh, these, you know, this process is really spawning off into those different tracks of work. In this particular example, if I drill down into that, I can see how long it's been running for. I can also have a look at the participants. And in this particular example, I can see it's gone to the HR team that needs to complete that piece of work. Now, for demo purposes, I've also told it to send it to the HR team and to me. So it's gone to HR and to the individual Igor uh, to complete this work. If I have a look at the IT authorization, what this particular one has done is it's allocated to, to Brandon using a round robin mechanism and it's also allocated it to me for demo purposes so it's gone to those so that's gone to an individual where that's gone to a group All right so let's go back and have a look at uh, the, some of the other things that we can do inside here so if we go back to our um, another view of, of how we can represent the process if I click on it over here this is another type of dashboard built purely on KT Smartforms where I'm showing just a summary of the process that's running as well as who's doing what. So I can see all the activities and all the people that have been allocated. So you can see Human Resources and Igor and Igor and Brandon for the IT and for the HR jobs. So let's go and have a look at my task list as well. So with inside of my, my task list you can see that I've received two tasks again because I'm playing both roles and if I drill down into any individual of those you'll see something slightly different. So let's go and have a look at the, uh, the human resources one first. So drilling down into the human resources task we see their form that's appeared and what you'll notice is on their form a lot of things are hidden away from the users. So the HR team in this particular example so they've got a lot of sensitive information on the screen. So what they'd like to do is be able to work on their form but hide information away while they're busy working. As an example over here, I can open up the employee details, see the details of the employee, close it up, open up the role details where I've got the salary information and I can see the details of that particular person's role and salary without the both sets of information at the same time. I can also go and specify that I've done some inductions, maybe upload a CV or additional documentation and then go and add further items to this form. So for example, they might need to go on K2 training and then I'm going to go and set their start date to a week ago. But of course that's going to give me some validation letting me know I can't put somebody on training before the actual start date. So just showing you some of that capabilities coming in. As I'm adding in this training requirement over here, it's also going to go and automatically send them a meeting request for, for this particular training so it's inside of their Outlook diary as well. So HR is now having a look at their, their form and the information. Uh, they can go and complete that, just specify a little comment, and submit that off. What What's happened then is our uh, employee, um, our um, HR process is then completed. And now we, what we're doing is just waiting for the IT task to complete. What we're going to do in this particular example as well is I'm going to go now into SharePoint. So this is uh, me logged into my SharePoint environment. And with inside of SharePoint, what you can see, I'm also exposing the list of applications that you saw on the KT Immersion experience. But I'm also exposing my task list. And what you can see inside of my task list are the list of tasks that I've got in here, including that IT authorization uh, that we've got to approve. So you can see that list of tasks is exactly the same as that list of tasks over here. So again, it's just showing you different ways that you can have K2 running independently as standalone, but you can also then go and expose K2 inside of your SharePoint environment. So in this particular example over here, I'm going to uh, click on the IT authorization. That's going to open up my form with inside of SharePoint, and I can see slight differences on this particular form. What you'll notice on this form, as I look at the employee details, I don't see their salary information. If I go to the tabs, I can see all the information about the IT equipment that's been requested, uh, but I don't see that salary information as well. So what's what's happening in this example? And if I go into if I go into the IT authorization from my immersion experience, you'll see the same form, again showing me information that's going to help me do my job, but not showing me information I'm not privy to see. So I can't see the salary data. So what we're doing here is we're showing the right information to the right person, uh, rather than. Uh, um, you know, everyone's seeing exactly the same data and seeing exactly the same form. 
So this person I can go through, they can see the HRs completed uh, their particular task and they can see what they did there. They can also go and have a look at the IT equipment that's been uh, re you know, requested. And what they can then go and do is make a decision whether they're going to go and approve or decline this. So then my particular case, I'm going to say it's all fine and go and approve this particular workflow task. What you can see is that workflow, my task list is now cleared. My employee onboarding, let's go and have a look at what's happening inside of that particular process. So we can see that process is now, comp all those steps have now completed. We can see it's busy going through, it's doing some final onboarding uh, uh, checks and uh, things that are taking place inside here. One of the things that's actually taking place in this particular step is it's automatically generating a PDF document that's going to be sent to the employee to let them know that they've been onboarded with all of their login details and all the information that they might need for when they start uh, start their, their, their job when they arrive. This particular process we can also go and analyze, have a look at charts or reporting information to give us an idea of what was the bottleneck with inside of this process. We can then take this information and use it in various different K2 reports to be able to report against uh, you know, bottlenecks within workflows or even uh, performance based upon users that are interacting with the system. One of the things that you can also do is uh, take these reports and uh, put them with inside of your process as well. So for example, uh, this is a line manager approval that I have to do. Let me go and log into this particular line manager. I can see details of the expense claim that I need to approve, but in this particular example, I'm showing a report within the process of previous expense claims and a bit of a trend. So again, just using that reporting to help you make a decision uh, with inside of your process, not only leaving reports uh, at the end of your process to be able to track what actually happened. So hopefully this has given you a bit of a view of the use of K2 within HR, uh, using the K2 forms to be able to submit uh, uh, forms off, forms that start workflow processes, processes that can span multiple departments at the same time, creating tasks and showing people different forms as well so they don't necessarily see uh, the exact same data. Within those forms people can uh, interact and they can add further information, upload documents, upload uh, training, you know, different information can be added within root of the process ind independently of everyone else interacting with their particular tasks. Those workflows then can be joined back together again and completing the process so that when our employee gets his final notifications, we rest assured that everything has been done correctly for, for them to start, on, to start work. Thank you very much for uh, watching this presentation.